Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lion. Lion is a classic Dota support hero. He's just an iconic hero in general, along with like Pudge and Jug. It just, Lion is one of those heroes that you think about when you think about Dota. And I don't know if that's the main reason why, or just in general, because it was such a simple, straightforward hero. It just hadn't seen any changes in such a long time. I mean, 10 plus years ago, this hero was playing mid, and that was a viable position. Now, that is a long gone, like, just nobody that's new to Dota in the last 5 to 10 years even knew that Lion was really a mid at one point, even in pros, because that's just not a viable strategy anymore. Yes, you could play it in unranked or as a meme build, but really it's not serious. Like, some of these other, you know, supports could potentially even go mid. That's really not the case for Lion. He's just like a stunning, typical support that is squishy, and it's kind of risk-reward in that way. And there wasn't really any changes to the hero in that amount of time. You know, all these other heroes, they get power creep, they get new mobility abilities like Zeus, or they just get their passive kind of integrated into another ability and they get a new ability altogether, like let's say Alchemist. But Lion really hadn't seen any changes for a long time until the last 6 to 12 months. I forget exactly when it happened, but he got his best ability, or his worst ability now became his best ability, <laughs> which is kind of a crazy thing to happen. Um, his mana drain ability was just kind of forgotten. It was almost useless in a lot of ways. And now it's the thing that makes the hero so, so annoying. He almost becomes Pugna in a lot of ways, which is crazy just to think about that. And so that's the main kind of focus of the hero in a way. Yes, he does stun, he does all of these things, and he has a hex, which, you know, not many heroes have a hex, and that's a silence and a stun combined. But now this mana drain thing that he has, it's just so much better than it ever used to be. And so that really kind of changes the dynamic of the hero. But he still does play support, and he still kind of does a lot of the same things. He just has another element to his game. But before we can understand how to play Lion, we have to take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Lion in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that good, stunning support like I talked about that has an added element to his game. So first we're going to take a look at Earth Spike. This is a pretty straightforward ability. You can just click it on the enemy and a spike comes out and they take damage and they're stunned. But there is a small quirk about this ability. If you actually click on it and you highlight the area, you see that's the cast range. But then when I go to cast it, there's these little lines that go past the cast range and that's because you can click it on the enemy and you walk up to them in the cast range or you can actually click it from outside the cast range on the ground and the Earth Spike actually goes further than the cast range for solo, you know, clicking on an enemy, single targeting an enemy. And so you can use that in multiple ways to obviously get extra range on the ability, which is really helpful, or to, you know, stun people from fog, or to, you know, line it up to maybe stun two heroes at a time, that kind of stuff. Because it's not just, a, it's not, you know, on that straight line, you can see there is a width to the stun there. So even though this is a pretty easy ability to hit to make sure you get a secured stun, there is a little bit of nuance there where you can actually use this ability to have kind of a skill cap, you know, a skill ceiling where you can do some fancy stuff to make it a little bit better than just straightforward clicking on the guy and stunning him. So that's Earth Spike. And then we have Hex. This is, you know, very straightforward, just really straightforward. You just click the Hex on the enemy and they're Hexed. Now the thing to talk about is a Hex, uh, when you actually stun them and silence them, which is important, they can move around. If they have a haste, they can run away, so just keep that in mind. And it is important that they are silenced too, because some things like, let's say, Ursa Ags can be used while stunned, but, you know, because it's a silence, you actually can't do that, so that's very important as well. And also, hexes are instant, so when this Earth Spike comes out, you can see there's a cast animation, kind of the spike is traveling, so it takes some time. Heroes can react, press BKB, you know, blink away, that kind of stuff. But hex is really good because as long as you're, like, in the direction to cast it, it'll just happen instantly if you're in range. And so it's very good for surprising people, for ganking, for blinking in and hexing. That's usually what you want to start off any kind of gank or fight with is the hex because it is instant so just keep that in mind and then next we're going to look at mana drain so mana drain that's pretty straightforward as well as you just click on the enemy and you can see their mana is drained and they also take some damage also the uh, range is pretty annoying so if you click on them they're slowed and then they have to run away and you know it's not until they get out of the range that they actually stop getting their mana drained you can see this at max level this axe level 14 already has no mana, which is very, very annoying to deal with. Like, that's why this hero is so good now, and why this ability is so good now, because it's just 
not only is it good in this way, but it has added extra stuff that I haven't even talked about yet with the shard and with allies. And the one with allies is, let's say we spawn an axe here and we uh, level up his ability, and then he uses his ability. Let's well, actually get to turn free spells off. He uses his ability. You can see he used some mana. Well, actually, now what you can do is you can mana drain your allies and give them back mana, which is really good for helping out your cores who are farming in the jungle, farming waves, you know, whatever they're doing in the middle of the game, let's say you have a storm on your team or something like that, and they're out on the map trying to gank, well, they don't have to go back to base because, you know, you can just give them mana. Then you can drain mana from creeps as well. It's not just enemies that you can drain mana from. And there's a lot of creeps in the jungle that have mana or ranged creeps in the lane that have mana. So there's so many ways to get mana and then give mana to your team. That's just an extra dynamic to this ability that it didn't have until relatively recently. And then we're going to talk about the Finger of Death, which is the ultimate ability, and then I'll talk about the Ags and the Shard, which kind of upgrade this ability, and also I'll talk about a couple other things with these abilities um, that aren't so straightforward. But first, we're going to take a look at Finger of Death, because it is very straightforward. You literally just click it on an enemy, and it takes burst damage. It's like Lena's uh, Laguna Blade. It's very simple in that regard. Um, the one thing that does happen is... We'll kill this axe here. You can see there I killed him. Now I have these finger of death bonus damage uh, stacks that kind of are permanent. So it's kind of scaling damage in that way, which sort of could allow this hero to become a core, but it's just not viable as the hero exists. And then the ags actually is an AoE kind of ability. So we'll just actually spawn this manta here and then we'll click the ultimate. You can see it destroyed the mantas because they take more damage. But in general, it's just there's an AoE and it damages everything in that AoE. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But, you know, if you did play core, if this does become a viable core in the future, which who knows if that will ever happen. I mean, it's possible for, uh, for sure. This might be a big reason why. So that's eggs. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the shard, which is a huge, huge thing. It's kind of what made the hero a lot better than it used to be. And so what the shard does is, first of all, you can mana drain. And now you get BKB, which is insane because you're basically immune to stuns. You also take way less uh, magic damage, as you can see, 60%, which is ridiculous. Um, so you're just so hard to kill. You can go in, use all your abilities, and then mana drain them, and they can't really fight you. I mean, yes, if there's right clicks and stuff, they can right click you down, but they can't use any of your abilities. They can't really stop the mana drain from, drain from happening, which is just the most annoying thing. It also increases the range. So keep in mind, like, I'm mana draining this guy, he's slowed, he has to run away, and look at the insane range on this mana drain, like, that's, that's ridiculous, dude, like, you really just have to run away, or just accept the fact that you have no mana now, that's really what it is on this hero, when you use mana drain, and then the other thing to talk about is now, see, I can't even use the manta, because I don't have enough mana, uh, the enemy can use, like, manta, or be an illusion hero, and if you click mana drain on that enemy, it goes to multiple targets, and so those illusions get, you know, they just disappear completely. It actually, like, lets you know uh, what illusion is an illusion and which is the actual hero, so keep that in mind. And then if there is another enemy, you can drain both of them at the same time because it allows you to have multiple targets. Actually, that enemy wasn't in range, so there we go. Now they're both drained, so you can see that. Um, so yeah, it allows you to drain multiple heroes at a time. Now this mana drain without the shard, it still works on illusions. It only works on one illusion at a time. So sometimes before you have shard, let's say this guy spawns um, this, you actually use Hex to destroy one illusion because Hex also destroys illusion, illusions. And then you can use Mana Drain to destroy the other for cases of Manta or what have you because, um, you know, obviously like other heroes like Phantom Lancer or other heroes like uh, Naga, they spawn multiple illusions. And then there is a talent here that has AoE Hex. So if you are level 25 and there is something like a Phantom Lancer, that's another good counter to illusions. So this hero is kind of like a mini counter to illusion hero type of thing, but obviously that's later in the game. This might get changed at any point, but this is kind of a mini counter. It's not as good as maybe like Zeus or Storm or Lesh, but it is good from the support to have this kind of added benefit to see through Manta and everything like that and be able to see which hero is the right hero. So that's Lion. Those are his abilities. And you can see they're pretty straightforward. I mean, they haven't changed too much over the years, but this Mana Drain does make it a little bit more advanced and give that extra ability to him to impact the fights and not just be useless with one of his skills later on. So that's Lion. Those are his abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played. Now, Lion's laning stage is relatively simple. He's just like any other squishy range support. You want to position yourself correctly so that you're not getting run down and killed because you're relatively slow, relatively squishy, but you also want to be in range to right-click the enemy, harass them, and use your stun, which is good for chasing people down, getting that harass damage in, and potentially getting kills. But you do want to be careful because if you use your stuns too aggressively and you're out of position, then you can actually get turned on and run down because you really have nothing else to help you in that sense. Like, you're just vulnerable after your stuns are on cooldown, so just keep that in mind. 
Then otherwise the goal of the laning stage is to harass the enemy and get some right clicks in, but then stun them and then mana drain them. That's really what you're going to be wanting to do for a lot of the laning stage because it's very, very annoying. And a lot of heroes, you know, they rely on their mana in the laning stage to harass or to survive or to do, you know, whatever they need to do in that lane. So the less mana they have, the less they're able to do that for the most part in most cases. And so honestly stunning them first and then mana draining them and then forcing them to run away from you, run away from the creeps, not last hit as much or whatever it may be. Just keep that in mind. That's a big, big part of the laning stage being very annoying like that with your mana drain. Then transitioning to the mid game, your main job is going to be following around your cores to gank the enemy when they're farming alone or following around your cores to defend them from ganks because this hero is really not very good at clearing waves and not very good at defending towers. Like there are some other supports that have good wave clearing abilities and yes, your stun does damage, but it's really not enough to clear through waves and you're just going to be sitting there right clicking the you know, creeps, and that's really not great. Plus, if you're sitting next to a tower by yourself and just right-clicking or stunning, you know, the enemy is just easily, easily going to be able to run you down, dive the tower, and kill you. So, yes, you want to be a part of any kind of defenses of towers, but you don't want to be there by yourself trying to clear waves because that's really not what the hero does. So you're all about sticking with your core, ganking because you're really good at stunning and locking down and doing some damage once you get your ult, or just helping heroes, you know, survive in the jungle or defend or whatever, but you want to pair yourself with the core at all times. Plus, you also want to have your mana maxed out as much as possible by draining creeps in the jungle or the lane or whatever so that you can give your cores that are in the jungle that are farming more mana and constantly let them be topped off with their mana or at least have enough mana to farm and fight so that they don't have to go back to base because, you know, a lot of heroes in Dota build items that allow them to farm and kind of sustain mana so they don't have to waste time running back to base or TP out or whatever it is. And if you can just eliminate that completely from a lot of these heroes, you know, even thought process. A lot of these players don't even have to think about their mana anymore because the line is giving the mana. That's just amazing. And then it even has an added benefit if you have a hero like Lesh or like Storm that relies on mana to do everything in the game, then they just never have to really worry about it because these days, honestly, you're maxing out your mana drain, so it's going to be very easy and effective to keep your cores maxed out with mana in that mid-game portion where it's so, so important. Then in terms of ganks and fights, there really are two drastically different ways to play the hero. The first is to initiate. A lot of times you're going to be getting some kind of blink dagger, maybe four staff, maybe glimmer cape, you know, whatever it is on the hero. Uh, blink is very, very effective on this hero though. And any hero that has a hex, it's very effective because you can blink in, hex the target, in, you know, immediately, initially, and they really can't react or do much about that. So if there are, you know, heroes farming side lanes by themselves that you pretty much know they're by themselves, if you pair yourself with another core, it's very easy to get those kills on side lane heroes that are you know farming alone and so ganking is very very effective and in that case you're going to be the initiator because of that hex like i talked about and that can also happen in team fights you know if you do have a 5v5 fight it is effective sometimes to blink in and hex the guy in front but because you are squishy and that is one of your only defensive abilities you really do need to be careful as a lion jumping in to start fights when you kind of know it's a 5v5 breakout because people can just turn on you immediately and kill you very, very quickly. And so you don't want to just waste your life away early on in the fight because you can get multiple rounds of spells off in fights if you survive. And so sometimes if you know it's going to be a big fight and it's not a gank, you want to stay in the back, sit kind of in the back lines, let the enemy cores show first because otherwise they might just jump you and kill you. And then you can get multiple rounds of spells off. You can mana drain people that are, you know, initiating from the enemy team, that kind of stuff as sort of a counter initiate with that mana drain, with the hex, with whatever it is. And so play the back lines in that way. And so that's why there's two drastically different things to do with this hero, kind of initiating fights or sitting in the back line. And it's the circumstances that matter that make you determine which one to do. And that's honestly the skill of the hero, just understanding how to be most effective and not feed your life away because you are so important with all those stuns and that mana drain. So you want to keep yourself alive as long as possible. And then just like I alluded to there with getting rounds of stuns off and mana drain, really what you want to be focusing on in the fight is getting your stuns off first and potentially even your ultimate and then using your mana drain when those things are on cooldown to just be annoying and you also are hard to kill so that can kind of be a defensive way to just position yourself and be like hey it's very hard to kill me I'm BKB'd you can't really use stuns on me you're going to have to come right click me and that can be a little bit of a bait too but you want to focus on stuns first because those are the most effective things that you're going to be doing in the fight and then mana draining as kind of your secondary thing that just is 
like I said, very annoying. I can't just emphasize that enough that this is so annoying to use if you're in the back lines and they can't commit to kill you and they just have to run away because they know if they try to kill you, they're just going to die because the cores are going to turn and kill them. So that is really how you want to be thinking about Lion. And then, you know, once all your abilities are on cooldown or whatever, or once your stuns come back up, then you kind of re-initiate, go back into the fight and use them again to get multiple rounds off like I talked about. And then the last thing to consider, which I haven't really mentioned very much, is his ultimate. And this is one of the few heroes in the game that's honestly not very ultimate focused. The ultimate is kind of almost an afterthought in a way. Because yes, it's good, don't get me wrong, to get that big burst damage in a gank or whatever it is, you know, kill that one hero that you need to kill in fights, but it's really not that much damage scaling into the late game unless you're getting a ton of stacks early. And really, you're just going to be using it one time in most fights. I mean, this cooldown once you get to max level is decent but it's really just a one-time thing so in a gank obviously you just use the ability if you can on the hero that you're ganking that's pretty obvious and you might not want to steal the kill from your core if you can't help it but you definitely want to be using it closer to the end when it dies because you don't have to get the last hit but you do want to use the ability close to when that hero dies so that you can get that stack to do more damage in the future so that's kind of really the only thing to consider otherwise it's pretty straightforward just click r on the guy hope he dies because you're doing a bunch of damage it's really just that easy and that, everyone, is my lion guide. If you liked the video or found it helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.